Residence Times by Sohar Residents for Sohar Residents. This issue for Autumn 2022. To contact Tenants Times, email tenantstimes at gmail.com. On Twitter at tenants underscore times. Telephone, free phone 0800 014 1545 and ask for Tenants Times. Victoria Dingle from Henley-on-Thames says, Welcome to this autumn edition of Tenants Times. As I write, I am appreciating the view from my window, with multicoloured leaves falling from the trees as the sun tried to peep out from behind the clouds. I appreciate my mum's knitting as it keeps me snugly warm. We have lots of new writers this issue. Thank you to those who offered their time. It wouldn't be possible without their support. We hope you enjoy stories from your communities, hidden gems of information, top tips and loads more. Remember this is a publication for residents by residents. If you have an idea for what should be featured in the next edition, why not join the team? Now make a warm drink, snuggle up on the sofa and enjoy your newspaper. Victoria. As ever, please tell us what you'd like to see in the next edition. You can contact Victoria at tenantstimes at gmail.com or by phoning free phone 0800 014 1545 and asking for the communications team who will contact Victoria to ring you back. Party Matters by Irenka Matika. Irenka writes, What's the life of a man any more than a leaf? A man has his seasons, so why should we grieve? Although in this world we appear fine and gay, like a leaf we must wither and soon fade away. That's a chorus from a traditional song. Recently, someone very dear to me underwent a quadruple heart bypass. It felt like the end of my world. Walking through the park on a hospital visit, not only was I aware of the stunning leaves which would inevitably soon fade away, but around me were horse chestnuts, acorns, beech nuts, sycamore seeds, all with the potential for regeneration. Though my heart felt hollow, I knew that nature's capacity for renewal held a symbolic hope for us. My loved one is slowly gaining strength and healing, a reawakening. He has two sons and grandchildren. Both human life and the seasons go round and round. Tricks, treats and tips. Money-saving tips. You don't need Tenants Times to tell you there's a cost of living crisis, but Amy Brandt's tips to save some pennies are exclusives. Switch to own brand. If you love your brands, look for offers such as Half Price or BOGOF. Buy one, get one free. Stockpile or freeze if you can. Turn off appliances that are not in use. They all use power if they're switched on at the mains. A small amount saved on the energy bills, but it adds up over the year. Sales. Thinking ahead about upcoming birthday presents can save you money. There are lots of sales in the lead-up to Christmas. Make use of these, not just for Christmas shopping. Online club cards and voucher codes. Online voucher codes can benefit you from free delivery to 10% off. Most supermarkets have apps and offers on things you buy, along with points, which turn into vouchers. Use them to your advantage. But, the golden rule, don't buy an item if you weren't going to anyway. Repurposing. There are lots of Facebook groups, sites such as eBay and Vinted, and of course the high street charity shops, which are great for a bargain. Make some extra cash by selling online as well. One person's trash is another's treasure, as they say. Make use of warranties. 
manufacturers give a 12-month warranty on products. If there's no damage and the products just stop working, you can get it replaced for free from the place you bought it. Some companies also offer an extended warranty for a small price, which will cover accidental damage over X amount of years. Always worth looking into, especially if you are buying for a child. My big tip. If you have a loyalty card with a retailer, most will have a digital copy of your purchase. So if you no longer have the receipt, they can still search and find it for you. Prize draw. Win. Tell us your money-saving tips by the 9th of December and we'll draw three names out of the hat to win a £10 shopping voucher each. We'll post the best in a regular feature on Facebook. Write to tenantstimes at gmail.com or ring the Sohar Communications team on free phone 0800 014 1545. If you write to us, please be sure to say if we can mention your name on Facebook or if you'd prefer not. Terms and conditions apply. Visit www soha.co.uk slash terms hyphen and hyphen conditions Warm and welcoming There's no need to heat your own home when there are welcoming public spaces set up for communities to enjoy being together having a cuppa, playing games or getting homework done now colder weather is here They may be in community centres like in Charlbury village halls, East Hendred, churches or pubs. In Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire, libraries are offering warmth, access to the internet and computers, as well as books. Keep up to date with the Warm Spaces initiatives around our area by checking in with our website www.soha.co.uk slash cost hyphen of hyphen living hyphen crisis or the Soha Social and Events Facebook page. In your neighbourhood, Wallingford residents minted by Chris Green. Chris writes, Wallingford is steeped in history going back to the Roman era, but especially so during the long tenure of the Anglo-Saxons, when Wallingford was a key element especially in keeping those pesky Vikings at bay. The oldest church in town, St. Leonard's, dates to around 600 AD, and the northern elevation still has Saxon blockwork. Wallingford has a particularly long history of supporting the English monarchy to the present day. It was a key strong point in the Saxon defence of Wessex from incursion from the Danes, and an important centre for tax collection. Alfred the Great made it one of eleven Burr towns, fortified and creating a chain of defences in which no single stronghold was more than 20 miles from the next. Second only to Alfred's administrative capital at Winchester, Wallingford today has the best preserved Saxon town defences in England and retains the rectangular street pattern of Saxon origin. As well as military and administrative functions, all 11 Burr towns were licensed by Alfred's grandson Athelstan in 936 AD to mint silver pennies bearing the king's insignia. This made the town even more attractive to Danish invaders and the southern rampart was breached twice in 1006 and 1013. But on both occasions, the town was spared burning, if not damage to property and theft. The likely location of Wallingford's mint was Goldsmiths Lane, where established gold and silversmiths were licensed by the king to be moneyers, producing coins as part of their business. Every six years, the currency was recalled and reminted, even if the coins were still of the reigning monarch, largely due to the clipping of the coins to harvest the metal by unscrupulous thieves. Reminting was also necessary when a monarch died. Wallingford coins, easily identified by the town's portcullis insignia, 
which you would have found on a threepenny bit, were probably produced on a site near the modern junction of Church Lane and the Kynecroft. The licence to produce coins was withdrawn in the mid-13th century when the five remaining Burr mints were replaced. A must for any visit to Wallingford is the museum, which is a gold mine of historic information. Volunteer staff who give their time to the town so generously can also provide guided tours. Our grateful thanks are due to a member of the Wallingford Museum's volunteer staff for their help in compiling this article. Looking forward to spring at a jewel of a house by the Thames by Maureen Hodgkinson. Near Farringdon in Oxfordshire, you will find Buscott Park, which is open from April until September. It's a glorious 18th century country house with stunning landscape gardens. You enter the walled gardens beside the house and step into quadrangles with glorious flowers, water features, and, as you ascend the steps, there's even a display of life-size terracotta warriors. Continue towards the lakes and extensive parkland and you'll see Egyptian statues, a citrus fruit garden, bridges, follies and an obelisk that doubles as a sundial. There are lovely walks around the estate and, if you go inside, the house is stunning with a beautiful art collection by Edward Byrne-Jones. Basket Park at SN78BU will open on the 5th of April 2023, from 2 until 6pm, six days a week. Entrance prices are £12 and £10 for house and gardens, or £9 and £7 for the gardens only. National Trust members have free entrance. Happy Memories – A 70-Year Hobby by David Edmonds David writes, my right royal hobby started in 1953. My mum started me off by collecting memorabilia from the coronation of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, from shops, fates and churches. The oldest and my personal favourite items are from Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, dated 1897. I have mementos from then up to Her Late Majesty. On her Platinum Jubilee, I showed 28 of them, and the comments were really heartwarming. I also have a mug commemorating her wedding to Prince Philip. The most unusual mug I have commemorates Edward VIII. All the bone china for his coronation in 1936 was made before he abdicated, and there was no coronation at all, and all the mugs were withdrawn. Some had already got out into the market, though, including mine, which my daughter bought for me from an antique shop in Sheffield. I have mugs, cups, saucers and plates, including one issued for the Queen's first birthday. I also have a mustard pot, salt and pepper shakers, and a penknife, all lovingly looked after. Some of them have moved house with me seven times, but all are in good condition, having been very well wrapped. I've been to every royal funeral since the war. At Westminster Abbey, I waited my turn to file past the coffin of Diana, Princess of Wales, with thousands of other people. My daughter, Elise, and I queued for eight hours at St James's Palace for the funeral itself. One day, I will be looking for the mug for King Charles III. The Best Day of My Life by Bertie Doy In 2015, Elizabeth Carney Haworth, OBE, was the head of Torpoint Nursery and Infant School when she and her husband David had a light bulb moment. Bertie Doy tells us more. How about children enriching their reading experience by sharing a story over the telephone with an older member of the local community? The Haworths project was launched as Silver Stories in 2016. By January 2021, 70 of the 149 listeners were Soha residents. Silver Stories has been such a great initiative for people like me to become involved in especially during lockdowns. 
The feedback has been so positive, and I know that silver listeners like me feel more connected and useful because of the genuine friendships we develop with our silver reader and the wider family. These weekly phone calls have helped to reduce feelings of loneliness and isolation. The young readers benefit because they can practice their reading and gain confidence. Many of us listeners stay in touch with the families. I started listening to Ollie Reed and was soon joined by his sister Tegan, who is partially sighted. She is learning Braille as she will go completely blind and she makes up stories to tell me. We have FaceTimed each together, along with Ollie and Tegan's parents, Cheryl and Malcolm. We have all forged a great friendship. In 2021, Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall, now the Queen Consort, became its patron. I and other silver listeners, along with other silver readers and their families, had the privilege of meeting her at a celebration event in July 2022. I was pleased to tell the waiting cameraman that meeting her was the best day of my life. Word for Word What Does Autumn Mean to You? by Jessica Dingle Apples tumble from the trees, so delicious to eat, whilst the orangey-red leaves form a beautiful carpet under my feet. Under the ground, animals can be found sleeping in a warm bed. Lots of work occurs before they can rest their head. Time to snuggle up under a blanket and enjoy a hot drink. Soon your cheeks warm up and turn rosy pink. Under the stars, we reflect on the past year. Soon Christmas will be here. Make sure you remember an umbrella and coat. You might get cold and wet if you don't. Nights are longer, and days get colder, but I'm having a lot of fun as I grow older. Jessica Dingle, age nine years. Community News A Soha Community Remembers by Doreen Gao The Polish Memorial Garden in Whitchurch on Thames has been built on the site of the former chapel, which was used for mostly Polish Catholic worshippers, and which was demolished in 2014. During the Second World War, mostly the Polish, together with Italian refugees and a few from England, plus a contingency of Canadian and American pilots, lived in rows of 48 Nissan huts. Together with four flat-roofed buildings in what was then called Coombe Park, now Manor Road, where there are Soha homes. The actual entrance to Manor Road was in fact the official entrance to Coombe Park then. When the war was over and the pilots had left, the camp was then transferred by the Ministry of Defence to Oxfordshire County Council. The camp subsequently developed into Manor Road, with all Nissan huts long gone, barring one flat-roofed building, which remained and became the Whitchurch Village Hall, now modernised with a high roof, state-of-the-art kitchen and amenities indoors and cared for by two long-standing Soha tenants. They catered for those attending the opening of the Memorial Garden at the end of the summer, with cakes and teas donated by Manor Road residents and other guests. The most significant part of the garden project is the raised platform to commemorate the site of the Polish chapel. Though a reflective site, The main area of the garden is to be mowed and used as an open space for picnics and activities. Anna Sapaniak, the guardian of the site, is the only remaining descendant of Polish refugees still living in Manor Road. Her parents arrived at Coombe Park Camp in 1947. She is the guardian of the Memorial Garden, and if you'd like to make contact with her, you can email her on anna, P-O-N-E-K, at btinternet.com. Residents take to the stage. Summer saw a gala event at Didcot's Cornerstone Arts Centre, where Soha residents took to the stage with prose and poetry they'd created. The theme was community, and a film has been made of the evening. 
You can meet, among others, Rosalind, Sarah, Linda, John, Clive, Arenka, Maureen, and their diverse talents on Soha's YouTube channel. Look for the film called Playing With Words. From our Watlington correspondence. Many people know Watlington only as somewhere you drive through on the way to the M40. Robert Ludlow and Linda Knott tell us why we should stop and step out of the car next time. Watlington is a small market town in South Oxfordshire. In the 1700s, the area around the town had an interesting history that was shared with us at a meeting in the town hall in September. During this meeting, we were told that between 1780 and 1815, Watlington was a centre of activity that drovers driving stock, cattle, sheep, pigs and geese to name a few, from the West and Welsh borders to London, so Londoners had access to fresh meat. We were also told that at that time, John Chilton, a friend of Jane Austen's brother Henry, lived in the area and that there was an interesting connection with Thomas Parker, the third Earl of Macclesfield, who was a member of Parliament. An item that intrigued me when I first moved to Wadlington is a large, chalk, triangular shape at the top of the National Trust area on Hill Road. This was created at the instruction of Edward Horne, a trader who believed churches should have steeples pointing to heaven. From his home, when he looked at the local church, he saw the chalk mark as a steeple on his church. We live in Old School Place, and this is Linda's garden. There are 35 flats and bungalows occupied by people over 50. Most of the grounds are shared lawns and plants in pots, and a greenhouse in which one tenant grows tomatoes for the benefit of other tenants. Most areas are shared by several tenants. The garden pictured in Tenants' Times is one where there was a vacant area that one tenant decided to make her own. On the fence is a sign calling the area Gin and Tonic Terrace. Another interesting item is the paddock, a small park just over a hedge. It is great to hear small children playing joyfully there. Just some of the delights of the lovely Watlington. The place where you live. Soha staff love to get out and about, but can't be everywhere all the time. Send them a picture of a lovely landscape near you this winter to show them what they're missing. We're saying landscape so that you don't have to worry about getting permissions from people who might be in your shot. There are some examples in the printed edition of Tenants' Times. The pictures will go on display in the Soha offices in Royal Scott House. Send them to tenantstimes at gmail.com or chat to the communications team on free phone 0800 014 1545 about getting it to them if you don't have email. Don't forget, if you enjoy photography, we're always on the lookout for people to take pictures for Tenants Times. Now it's time for this edition of Tenants Times, the newspaper by Soha residents for Soha residents to sign off. Thank you to everyone involved. Amy Brandt, South Morton. Jessica Dingle, age nine years. Bertie Doy, Didcot. David Edmonds, Kingston Bagpuis. Doreen Gow, Whitchurch on Thames. Chris Green, Brightwell Come Sotwell. Maureen Hodgkinson, Kingston Bagpuis, Linda Knott, Watlington, Robert Ludlow, Watlington, Irenka Motika, Sonning Common, and Victoria Dingle, Henley on Thames, Editor. We welcome all contributions from residents, from ideas for articles to ready to publish items. Contact us on tenantstimes at gmail.com or free phone 0800 014 1545 and ask for the Tenants Times team at any time. Victoria Tenants Times by Soha Residence for Soha Residence This issue for Autumn 2022